Well, Hurricane Ian is one of the costliest and deadliest storms in decades with more than 100 dead, homes washed away, cars flooded and businesses destroyed. Ian's devastation is palpable across the entire Sunshine State. Yeah, donations are pouring in for the victims of the storm. Let's bring in director of the Florida Division of Emergency Management, Kevin Guthrie, with the latest. Kevin, thanks for taking some time out of your schedule to chat with us, sir. You're welcome. Thanks to be on the show. Well, we're about nine days removed from Hurricane Ian making landfall in the Sunshine State. Talk to us about what it's like to see so much destruction throughout the state, especially in the Fort Myers area. Yeah, so today, I, as you said, I'm in the Fort Myers area. Uh, the governor has sent me down to uh, personally oversee a lot of the things that are going on in the hardest hit impacted areas. I was over in Sanibel today. I was over at Fort Myers Beach today. Um, the 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 structure over there is catastrophic. Obviously, the forecast coming in doesn't bode well for those that still are trying to repair roofs and even get tarps up on top of their roof. So um, there, there are going to be some exacerbated issues with that. But the uh, destruction is, is truly catastrophic. Um, you know, 45 miles of uh, barrier islands, um, literally, unless it's brand new construction, literally pancaked houses and things of that nature. So um, long time to rebuild, lots of flooding there as you're showing now. Uh, we're still getting flooding all the way over into St. John's County, Flagler County, uh, Volusia County. Those are all East Coast counties uh, about 200 miles away from where landfall was at. Um, so lots of problems all across the state from flooding issues of a 500 year plus flood event and then the uh, obviously catastrophic issues here on the ground at the beaches. Uh, we hate to hear you say that, um, you know, how everything is just so flattened. And so obviously infrastructure not doing great, but how are the residents dealing with the aftermath of Ian? The residents are very resilient. You know, there's a lot of emotions, as you can imagine, that are uh, going around. Um, you know, we lots of hugs and lots of tears uh, today over in Sanibel. But, you know, uh, people coming together, getting through things. Um, you know, people are now uh, in, a, in a situation where the uh, their house is gone. You know, they're, they got to get insurance over there to uh, do some uh, claims and whatnot. So but and that's difficult when the bridges are out. So we're trying to get uh, we're you know, we built a bridge in three days. Thanks to Governor DeSantis's leadership there and with the governor's leadership, uh, continued leadership. We're going to be able to uh, get a, another bridge open, hopefully by the end of the month. If somebody were to see the Santa Bell Causeway Bridge right now, they would say there's no possible way that that's going to be fixed by October 31st, but that's what we're shooting for. Some hard work there. Well, talk to us about the first post Ian alternative care site that's open in Lee County. What is it and how are you providing care to those in Lee County, which is hardest hit by Ian? Yeah, so uh, th this is certainly a uh, community medical center that we've uh, asked. We were asked by the, the state was asked to open up. Um, that is open at the Edison Mall now. It is taking patients. This is designed to be kind of a step down, if you will, from the hospitals to help decompress the hospitals on low to, mid to low to moderate acuity patients that don't necessarily need to be in a brick and mortar hospital. They just need to be watched for a couple of days. It's designed to keep people there 48 to 96 hours uh, before they can return home. Today, a decision was made that we're going to start to consolidate the shelters also to that facility because that facility can take up to 1,000 people. So uh, those that are now in a, for lack of a better term, short-term post-disaster homeless uh, situation and they don't have any other place to go, we're going to start consolidating people into that community medical center, part, portion it off to where a part of it is more of a short-term shelter, like 10 to 15 days. Um, and then, of course, the patients will continue to rotate out. But it's, it's great to have a community medical center here to help decompress the hospitals and uh, make sure that people, if they do get injured, they can actually go to a, a, a a regular emergency room and into a regular hospital. Yeah, a little bit of a silver lining there. What are maybe some of the resources most needed at, at this juncture in those areas? I'm glad you asked that question because many people want to send their donated items and donated goods. Uh, many times in disasters, there's, there's just no way to warehouse those things, um, especially down at the impacted area. Uh, there is not a warehouse available. There is not a staging area available that we could actually put those goods in, uh, into. Uh, we would have to push those all the way up to probably Tampa area or all the way down into the Miami area. And of course, that's not convenient. So what we want people to do is donate to uh, legitimate funds. Uh, obviously, the First Lady of Florida has a uh, disaster fund at floridadisasterfund.org. Uh, 
Uh, we want to make sure that people are donating to legitimate disaster organizations. Stay away from the GoFundMe account. Stay away from those things that it, you know people are saying they're helping individuals that they may be fraud. So please donate to uh, bona fide uh, charities. You know, there's a number of them, American Red Cross, Salvation Army, Samaritan's Purse. I could go on and on, but those are just some of the ones that are absolutely legit uh, funding sources. And right now, the best way to donate is through cash items. Well, Kevin Guthrie, hard work you guys are doing down there in Florida. We continue to send our thoughts and how we can help. Uh, Director of the Florida Division of Emergency Management, thank you for being with us tonight on Fox Weather. Thank you so much for having us. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.